Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back indeed. All right, we all know diet and exercise critical to protecting our heart, but so is sleep. Yeah, in fact, there's some new data that shows some serious health risks of not getting a good night's rest. So for that, we go to the expert, good friend, Dr. Mark Illinoff of the Cleveland Clinic to talk about a little bit when it comes to sleep and your heart. Now, obviously, you need sleep to rest and your heart benefits yes. from that, right? But what happens when you don't get that sleep that you need? People always ask how much, right. how much sleep do I need What's the number? to be healthy? And the number is seven to eight hours for adults. Mm -hmm. And of course, we all know those people who somehow get by in four hours, yeah. and there are other people who say they need yeah. 10 hours. Yeah, I, I mean, you. I need yeah, eight hours, right. but I only get about four. Right. Like last but, night, but was you come out this alert, looking this good after four hours. It's amazing. I'm envious. No, I'm, it's, <laughs> it's very it's, envious. This is not good. But health wise, no matter how you feel, health wise, your body is sending you a message, I want seven or eight hours. Yeah. And if people don't get that much, doesn't mean they're necessarily always in trouble, but they're more likely to get into trouble. What kind of trouble? Mm. A lack of sleep can cause high blood pressure, weight gain, leading to diabetes, leading to heart disease, hypertension. And therefore, just like we tell people, exercise, eat a good Mediterranean diet, don't smoke, also get good sleep. And the American Heart Association, for the first time ever, added sleep to their list of wow. behaviors as a thing you can and should do to control your heart, to control your heart's destiny. Well, think about it. I know, you know, our mothers always tell us sleep because it helps you heal. It helps your body heal. You definitely need it. 63% of Americans say they do not get enough sleep, especially during the week. Is there such a thing as kind of making up for it on on weekends or maybe breaking up sleep, getting a good nap during the day? Does it kind of all add up to be it maybe doesn't eventually? Add up or one no? for one. No? Yeah, if I'm up all night operating or, or doing something, if I'm up all night and then I take a nap, the nap doesn't cancel out the possible harm I did wow. by being up all night. It's like going and having a giant steak dinner and saying, I'll take a Lipitor. Mm. But, <laughs> yeah, right. Wouldn't it be great <laughs> if that worked? Or walk around the block, yeah. right? It doesn't work quite that way. But the, the thing for people to do is to realize this is something I can control. I can control my sleep pretty well. And by doing so, I reduce my risk, limit my risk of all these bad things. So you know, don't drink coffee in the afternoon. Don't drink a lot of alcohol at night. Limit screen time a half hour or so before you go to sleep because that light interferes with melatonin production in your brain and melatonin helps you go to sleep. So a whole bunch of things we call sleep hygiene mm -hmm. that can help people to get those seven or eight hours. It, does the heart do something different when you're sleeping versus when you're awake? Does it does it, I mean, obviously it slows rates, down a little heart bit. Heart rate slows a but bit. But is there, is there a rest and, and rejuvenation that happens in that period? No, not so mm -hmm. much. But the heart rate does slow down yeah. somewhat. And blood pressure dips a bit while you're asleep. So those things are good. But overall, it's more about all of the other systems that affect the heart related to sleep. Like high blood pressure is bad for the heart. Diabetes is bad for the heart. Being overweight is bad for the heart. Inflammation is bad for the heart. High LDL cholesterol is bad for the heart. And not enough sleep affects all those things, mm -hmm. which in turn hurt the heart. Gotcha. So we know we did a whole week devoted on the morning show a couple years ago to sleep. And we mm -hmm. all did different stories. Cleveland Clinic has a wonderful sleep whole department that yeah. people, because when you say you can control it, some people can't, and like I struggle with poor sleep, and I've always been a poor sleeper, so I can't control it. And as much as I want to sleep, I can't, I don't, so that's when you need to talk to your doctor because you may need some assistance. Yeah, and one of the more common things that people have and don't recognize is sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. And it can happen to people even in shape like you guys. I mean, the old image of someone with sleep apnea is somebody who's overweight, that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. So if you find that you are waking up a lot or somebody is with you, your partner, and notices that you seem to stop breathing for a little while, then mm -hmm. suddenly gasp, mm -hmm. those are signs, could be sleep apnea, which is 100% treatable. Yeah, I got some tests to coming see your up doctor, well. right? Yes. Uh, are you going to be on New Day? I will be. Excellent. So we'll hear more about heart and sleep coming up in just a few minutes. Always great to see you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you.